Hi everybody, I'm Lori Johnson. Welcome to Healthy Living. So glad you tuned in today. Thanks for joining us. My guest today is Mark Sisson, who is really one of the forefathers of the ancestral health movement. He has a wildly popular blog called Mark's Daily Apple, top in its category. And he has his own line of supplements and foods that we all see in the grocery store. But today we're talking about his brand new book. It's called Two Meals a Day, The Simple, sustainable strategy to lose fat, reverse aging, and break free from diet frustration forever. Sounds great. Mark, welcome. Great to see you again. Great to see you as well, Lori. Thank you very much for having me. So you have already written best-selling books, and you're so accomplished in your field and a very busy guy. So why did you decide to write this book about this subject in particular? Very interesting question. Um, you know, I've been in this field for 30 years. Uh, so much of my research continues to evolve. Uh, as you mentioned, I was, uh, you know, one of the leaders of the ancestral health movement, the paleo movement, then the primal movement, then the keto movement. And throughout all of these different iterations, um, it's always been my desire to figure out a way which most people could achieve optimal health with the least amount of pain, suffering, sacrifice, discipline calorie counting, portion control, and all that other negative nonsense that we tend to associate with what it takes to be, to be healthy. Um, I realized even after uh, you know, years of delving into the biology uh, of, of, of the human experience, that we basically come down to a recognition, and I think many of us realize this now, that we eat too much food, we eat the wrong kinds of food, and it turns out we eat at the wrong times of day as well. So those three things are sort of thwarting our efforts to succeed uh, in this process. So two meals a day was really my um, kind of synthesis of all the work I've done to recognize uh, the types of foods we should be eating, when we should be eating, and what other sort of lifestyle attributes we should be engaging in to enhance the experience of losing fat, um, losing, uh, you know, uh, becoming more uh, robust, uh, gaining muscle, having more energy throughout the day, sleeping better, um, certainly having a more ro robust immune system given these times. Uh, and it's all at our fingertips if we just sort of have access to the right information. So that's the reason for the book. Well, I just really appreciated, as I was reading the book, your sensitivity to pleasure. And, you know, a lot of people just shut down right away when they, you say the word diet or you talk about intermittent fasting. And I love how you kind of do a flip on that. You don't like to call it intermittent fasting. You call it intermittent eating. But the bottom line, folks, before you shut down, is that you can and you do have joy in life. You, you do have joy in food if you give up the sugar and the processed food. And that's kind of the, the, the starting point is this doesn't have to be something awful. Well, it, that's exactly right. And I, I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head. People will sometimes hear about a new way of eating or a new diet and think, all right, what do I have to give up? How do I have to, you know, sacrifice uh, pleasure in my life to achieve this ephemeral goal that I have? And the reality is you can have it all. Um, one of the things that really, uh, you know, that, that, that thwarts every a uh, diet program in history is hunger, appetite, and cravings. Like if you're hungry, no amount of information is going to uh, save you over the long term. If you're hungry, if you're always, you know, sort of fidgeting and wishing you had something in your, uh, you know, in your mouth to take the edge off, uh, that is not a way of eating that works. So with two meals a day, what we've done is we've recognized, first of all, that that uh, there are some strategies that we need to engage in to get rid of this tether that hunger holds on us. Uh, the appetite and the cravings that tend to dictate people's lives from minute to minute, hour to hour, day in and day out. When, you know, breakfast was great, what's for lunch? Lunch was great, what's for dinner? Um, you know, it's 10.30, it's time for a snack. It's, we have these uh, associations that we all have made through our lives with an attachment to meal times and, and the assumption being that if I don't eat this regular meal, I will run out of energy, um, you know, I'll get hangry, um, you know, maybe my immune system will suffer. And actually nothing could be further from the truth. What we've discovered over the past 10 years with this uh, new interest in fasting is that all the good stuff happens to the body when you're not eating. So the longer you can go without eating, 
within reason, of course, Lori. But the longer you can go without eating, uh, the, the better your body is equipped to deal with the, the insults that it deals with, with oxidative damage, with inflammation, uh, doing some cellular repair and house cleaning, um, shoring up the immune system. Um, all of these things are, you know, burning off stored body fat, obviously being, being a key one there. Uh, increasing the number of mitochondria that your muscles have. And mitochondria are these little energy systems, the powerhouses where the body generates energy by burning fat. The more of these mitochondria you have, the more energy you have and the more fat you burn. So we want mitochondria. So, so what we've discovered through this uh, research in the past several years is that fasting is the best way to achieve all of those goals. The problem is fasting just doesn't sound fun, right? It's just like, oh my God, I have to, like, how long do I have to not eat? Well, it turns out um, as you get into two meals a day, as you get into the book, as you get into this lifestyle, you start to get a hold of appetite and cravings. You wake up in the morning and you realize, I don't need to eat. I have all the energy I need. My body is burning fat. I could start the day out without having to fill my face full of unnecessary calories and probably offensive food. Uh, and and go about my day with ease and grace, and then only eat when I'm hungry. And again, make no mistake, I don't want people to go hungry on this program. The whole point is to not be hungry. The whole point is to be satisfied and satiated. I make sure that in my life, every bite of food I put in my mouth tastes great. So if you tell me, hey, you know, Mark, I got this great kale salad recipe, and it's got, you know, a little bit of lemon juice on it, I'm like, no. Nah, it may be good for me, but I'm not interested. If it doesn't taste awesome, I'm not interested. So what I want to make available to people are all these amazing foods that we talk about in the book, and, and it's meat, fish, fowl, eggs, nuts, seeds, vegetables, a little bit of fruit. I mean, these are all great tasting natural foods, uh, and they're all allowed uh, on, this, on this program. One thing that I thought was so interesting, and I don't think people are aware of this, is you really make a distinction between the good oils and the bad oils. We already know that sugar and, pro, you know, we already know oils, are, are, Oreos are bad for us. We already know that we shouldn't do the drive-through. But a lot of people don't know that things like canola oil or vegetable oil are really bad for us. These are things that we've assumed over the past 30 or 40 years because they sort of came to the forefront when the conventional wisdom in, in uh, you know, medicine and heart disease prevention seemed to indicate that saturated fat was going to be a problem. And so in the 40s and 50s and 60s, and then in the 70s, we had things like margarine and Crisco, and we started to develop these cooking oils like uh, corn oil and soybean oil and canola oil. And it turns out they're horrible for us. They may, might be more dangerous for us in the long run than sugar. I think most people know we have to sort of cut back on sugar, but I don't think a lot of people realize how pervasive these, what we call industrial seed oils, corn oil, soybean oil, safflower, sunflower, uh, canola oil, they're, they're really detrimental to our, uh, our health, they're detrimental to our ability to burn fat, they're detrimental to our ability to manage sugar. So a lot of people who have issues with, with uh, glucose metabolism, whether it's metabolic syndrome or full on type two diabetes, um, it may be that these industrial seed oils have been implicated in, uh, in leading some people down this path toward what we call insulin resistance, where the body just doesn't listen to the signals of insulin, and it just incubates more sugar, puts on more fat, and makes it more difficult to burn off that stored body fat. So really, the only way to, um, to reverse this, this course is to eliminate these industrial seed oils. And again, if you think about what I, the list I just gave you, so if you got rid of corn oil, soybean oil, uh, canola oil, and in its place, I said you can have all the extra virgin olive oil you want, you can have all the avocado oil, uh, coconut oil, all the butter, all the ghee, all the lard. Um, I, I think most people would say, that's a decent trade, right? Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a quick break and be right back with Mark Sisson. The new book is called Two Meals a Day, The Simple Sustainable Strategy to Lose Weight, Reverse Aging, and Break Free from Diet Frustration Forever. Stay with us. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels <laughs> in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? 
Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection in Protect Your Brain. Get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. Welcome back, and we're talking with Mark Sisson. The new book is called Two Meals a Day. And Mark, you talked last segment about insulin resistance. And in your book, you really drive home that message that insulin resistance is really the basis for so many health problems. A lot of folks don't really know what insulin resistance is. It's a, it's a somewhat complicated issue, but so important. Can you explain it in layman's terms? Sure. Uh, insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas, typically in response to a lot of nutrition in, in the system. Um, and typically, it's sugar uh, and glucose in the bloodstream that causes a rise in insulin. Insulin's job is to drive this nutrition, uh, whether it's glucose or whether it's uh, fats or whether it's um, uh, protein, amino acids into the cells. And so it's a, it's a fat and nutrient storage hormone. So the more insulin we have, the more we tend to store these nutrients. Well, sometimes uh, the, we, we put, produce so much insulin and the cells are already full of sugar and full of fat and full of amino acids that the cells become resistant. And they say, hey, hey, you know, we, we, we hear you, insulin. We, we understand that you're sending out the signal, but there's no room here. There's no room for, for any more nu nutrition in these cells. Um, my, my person is overeating. Um, and so the pancreas goes, well, I guess I just have to create more insulin. And so the pancreas starts to work over time, producing even more and more insulin. And of course, the insulin doesn't get hurt. It becomes, it's resistant. The cells become resistant to the signal of insulin. And that's when we have a problem, because if the cells don't take the nutrition, the glucose and the amino acids and the fats out of the bloodstream, they tend to accumulate in the bloodstream. And then we have high blood sugars, right? Then we start to get this type two uh, diabetes, which we call adult onset diabetes. And it's a result of our eating patterns as well as uh, a lack of exercise. One of the things we talk about in the book uh, is how to exercise appropriately, not too much, mind you, uh, just enough um, to, to, to help the body recognize and, and sort of uh, get rid of the excess sugar that way as well. So it's a very um, uh, uh, across the board program, uh, in, which includes you know when you eat, what you eat, how you work out, how you sleep, um, and even what you do in the way of say workouts in the gym. It's it's quite comprehensive. And you know when you talk about insulin resistance, our viewers might remember I recently interviewed an Alzheimer's specialist, Dr. Dale Bredesen, who identified some of the causes of Alzheimer's and insulin resistance was right at the top. And I noticed in your book, you also talked about when you address insulin resistance, you think more clearly. Can you kind of talk about that? Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's exactly right. First of all, you think more clearly simply because uh, when you're insulin resistant, your body has these wild swings where you eat a meal and typically you eat a meal that's got carbohydrate, which converts to glucose. Your brain has been trained for years to run on glucose. And so when you eat a meal with glucose, the brain loves it until the insulin gets 
too high and tries to get rid of the glucose. And one of the real big problems with, uh, with insulin resistance in muscle cells is that the fat cells are not as resistant to the signal of insulin. So sugar, go, it goes into the fat cells, which is not where we want it to go, right? So uh, th this is one of the, the, the big issues with uh, mood and, and blood sugar swings throughout the day. We eat a meal, blood sugar goes up, lots of insulin, too much insulin. Insulin drives um, the sugar down, and now the brain goes, wait a minute, where's my fuel? Where's my sugar? Where's my glucose? And so you have this fuzzy thinking. Well, when you become what we call fat adapted and learn how to burn body fat, and not so dependent on carbohydrate and glucose as a fuel, one of the things that happens is your brain becomes really adept at burning this elegant fuel that, we, that the liver produces called ketones. And when we become fat adapted, we also become keto adapted. And so the brain gets used to a lower level of glucose and becomes very comfortable burning ketones throughout the day, especially in those long periods of time when we're not eating food. Um, and as I say, the longer we go without eating, the better it is for the body. And the more the body, the muscles, the brain have an opportunity to, to build the metabolic machinery to burn fats effectively and to burn ketones efficiently. And your plan really lays out this wonderful thing that you refer to as metabolic flexibility, the body's ability to burn different types of fuel, not just blood sugar, but like you say, the ketones and so forth. And it's really exciting and so healthy. We're going to take another quick break and be right back with Mark Sisson. The book is called Two Meals a Day. Stay tuned. before you marry is a bad idea. Don't tell me there's no such thing as gun violence. That just depends on your definition of when life begins. Watch Dan and Dale tackle trending topics that test your faith on the next Faith Wire, Monday night at 9.30. The Global Lane takes you around the world, providing facts over fiction. What might rising trade and geopolitical tensions mean for you on the home front? With over 45 years of experience, award-winning journalist Gary Lane brings you the truth from a global angle. What about the issue of immigration? World news analysis you won't see anywhere else. And it's all right here on The Global Lane. Watch The Global Lane, Thursday night at 9.30. to Healthy Living. My guest today is Mark Sisson. The new book is called Two Meals a Day. And Mark, you know, we were talking about some of these oils that are dangerous, uh, the canola oil. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think canola oil is healthy. And so when we talk about cooking regular food, uh, what oils should we use? I've heard that olive oil really shouldn't be consumed uh, a, a high heat, like we shouldn't heat it up too much. Uh, good point. Um, yeah, it, it, what we call a smoke point, the point at which that oil becomes smoky in a frying pan, for instance. Yeah, so uh, extra virgin olive oil does not have a high smoke point. Um, avocado oil has a very high smoke point, so we use that a fair amount. Um, I like cooking with butter. Uh, and by the way, I'm not a big fan of high heat cooking either. So I try to keep uh, you know, the temperatures as, as low as possible if I'm grilling meat. Um, I actually make a great uh, pan-fried steak now. I used to I used to grill it outside on the on the barbie, and now I just uh, I pan-fry it lightly, and it it's, it just makes for an amazing uh, um, meal for me. Um, again, people cook with lard. Um, this is 
you know, <laughs> we're not we're not back in the 1930s or 1940s. No, it's actually people are cooking with lard. You can buy lard now in uh, in the deli uh, sections and in you know Whole Foods, and um, it's it's a legitimate and great uh, oil to cook with. Um, you know, uh, coconut oil, which is great to cook with, although it adds kind of a you know a funky taste sometimes to to certain things. Although, like uh, one of my favorite meals is uh, green beans with coconut oil and and uh, slivered almonds, for instance. So um, there are lots of uh, choices that we can use to do this uh, cooking without using. Uh, canola, corn oil, or any of these blends that are they're, that they're selling. And one of the things I would tell the listeners, uh, you know, it's probably the most insidious use of these oils is in restaurants because these oils are cheap. These, um, again, these industrial seed oils, the, the, the canola, uh, the soybean, and the corn oil uh, blend. So a lot of restaurants will use those to cook with. They'll also use them for their salad dressing. So I would, you know, if you're eating, if you're dining out, I'd ask the restaurant if they could make your dressing with, with, um, uh, olive oil, or you know, if you're eating, for instance, eggs, could they could they cook them in butter and not in the oil? One of the things I thought was interesting is you're sort of a proponent of the keto diet, but you say sometimes people misuse the keto diet, particularly by snacking too much. And this reminds me of my childhood. My mom used to tell me never to eat between meals, and somehow or other, this was thrown out the window and we feel like it's okay to sort of graze all day long. And you kind of, you know, refute that. Oh my God. I remember when I was uh, an elite athlete in the seventies and eighties uh, and I, you know, I was a marathoner and a triathlete, but then I had friends who were bodybuilders and who were, you know, doing other sports and seemed that it seemed that the common uh, mantra was, you know, eat five small meals a day, right? Never, uh, you, humans are grazers and, you know, always have, some protein and some carbohydrate every two or three hours, or else you'll go into cannibal mode and you'll cannibalize your 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 muscle that you work so hard for. And it turns out nothing could be further from the truth. If you are in fact what we call a sugar burner, if you're somebody who's dependent on carbohydrate and sugar to get through the day, that's probably um, a, a decent enough reason to have five small meals. But it's not going to serve you in terms of weight loss, in terms of glucose management, in terms of risk dis uh, management for uh, reducing a risk for heart disease and cancer all these things that we're trying to, to achieve. It turns out that the longer we can go without eating, as I said, uh, and, and not being hungry, because that's, you know, that takes, that takes all of the joy out of this. The longer we can go with just not having to eat and not, not feeling like we have to eat, the better it is for our bodies, the more body fat we burn off, the more energy we produce naturally, the more metabolically flexible we become. You used that term earlier, and that's my favorite word. So. Uh, I was a proponent of the keto diet. In fact, I have a New York Times bestselling book called The Keto Reset Diet. I don't live in a keto space all the time. I just use a keto way of eating to reset my metabolism. And that's part of what we do with, um, with two meals a day. We're using, uh, you know, we're reducing the carbohydrate intake and decreasing uh, the, the amount of times that we eat uh, in a day to just two. Uh, on this 16-hour uh, fasting, eight-hour eating window, it might look like uh, you know lunch at noon and dinner at 7:30, and there's your window right there. Uh, most of the people that I've worked with over the years, now myself included, I might have my first meal at 1:30 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and then and and it would be a small one because I don't I'm not that hungry. I'm so good at burning fat. I'm so metabolically uh, efficient and flexible. And then I might have my second meal at uh, you know my, my evening meal, which is gonna be a, you know, a sumptuous, hedonistic, two pound steak with grilled vegetables and a glass of red wine. Make no mistake, I'm not feeling sorry for myself. Um, I might have that at uh, you know, seven or 7.30. So I have an even more compressed eating window. But I feel great when I'm not eating. And that's, that's the key. That is the key. All right, we're gonna take one final break and be right back with Mark Sisson. Stay tuned. Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. I like your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary. Or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible. All in one place. The CBN Bible, available at CBN.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news. 
exclusive stories and programs. Credible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN Newswatch, because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. Woohoo! Hi, Superbook fans. Here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Whoa! No super balls, man. Come with... Oh, sorry, pardon me. Sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon. It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. We're back again talking with Mark Sisson. The book is called Two Meals a Day. And Mark, where can people find this book and find out more information about you? Well, just Google two meals a day and Mark Sisson, it'll come up on it. your favorite bookseller. Um, certainly on Amazon, that'll probably be the first one. Um, I have a blog called Mark's Daily Apple. Uh, I've been writing a daily uh, post for uh, 16 years now, oh, 15 years now. Uh, and um, and then I've got, I'm, I'm Mark Sisson Primal on Instagram if you wanna check out what I'm doing in my personal life. Uh, so lots of ways to uh, lots of ways to contact and find out more about two meals a day. And you have your own brand of supplements, full disclosure. Those are the supplements I take. And there was they were on back order at the beginning of this COVID pandemic. And I had a little panic attack there because I thought, what am I going to do without my vitamins? But luckily, they came into stock. And then you also have a brand of food that is in the grocery store. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, Primal Kitchen. Uh, we make sauces, dressings, and uh, toppings. We make condiments. We make um, mayonnaise based on avocado oil. Uh, uh, sh uh, sugar-free ketchup tastes great. It's organic. Um, lots of salad dressings, pasta sauces, all healthier versions of what you would uh, normally see in a store and say, nah, I, I, that's not on Mark's list. All of these are on my list. Yeah, they're fantastic. I eat that mayo almost every single day. I put it on everything. <laughs> all right, Mark, so great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Lori. And folks, thanks for tuning in to today's edition of Healthy Living. Once again, the book is called Two Meals a Day, The Simple Sustainable Strategy to Lose Fat, Reverse Aging, and Break Free from Diet Frustration Forever. Thanks again for being here. Hope to see you again next time on Healthy Living. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye now.